Welcome back to episode 3 of 10 for 10 by WatchGecko. This is a series from WatchGecko that sets out to inform you, the viewer, of 10 watches branching over 10 different categories that combined offer an extremely versatile, enjoyable and rounded collection, altogether coming in at a value less than £10,000. Stay tuned to the channel for regular new episodes, as well as the WatchGecko blog for further coverage of each watch featured. All links will be in the description. Next up is a type of watch which has somewhat been created from the members of the watch community. Unlike divers, chronographs and field watches, the beta watch is a little more vague in its definition. The need for a beta watch was somewhat birthed from the concept of owning watches that the owner would prefer to keep in better condition. The well-being and condition of the beta watch isn't a primary concern from the owner, as beta watches are simply there as the go-to watch for when things get a little more hands-on. Once you start growing a collection, the need for a beta watch increases, which is where this video comes in. If you're invested in the watch community, you'll likely be very familiar with this watch. The SKX from Seiko was received success far greater than I imagine Seiko could have ever believed. For a model that was introduced in 1996 alongside many of the modern divers using the 7S26 movement, on the surface it may come as a bit of a shock to see why this specific model has risen to the success it has. Searching terms online such as best entry level watch or first mechanical watch suggestions will yield results where the SKX is unavoidable. I think it's time we break down the SKX feature by feature to really understand why. Stick around for more outdoor shots and our top strap suggestions towards the end of the video. The SKX has had many different examples in its lifetime. However, the particular one we have here is the SKX 009J1. If you're familiar with diving watches, this watch has everything you'd expect to see. This stainless steel sports watch comes in at 42mm wide with a thickness of 13.5mm, acceptably modern proportions for a diving watch. A low to low length of 46mm really helps this piece feel very wearable on the wrist. More on that later. The 009 version has a red and blue 120 click rotating bezel, simple and reassuring to turn on the wrist. Bold hour markers combined with easy to read loomed hands make up the core DNA of the SKX. A raised angled second track can be found on this particular model around the rehort, just adding further depth to the dial. The loom used on this watch is perfectly visible glowing a warm green colour. When the SKX is on the wrist you'll be viewing that dial through a hardex crystal. This may not be the somewhat standard sapphire crystal we see on almost all watches today, but I don't think you can knock marks off Seiko here, bearing in mind the overall price of the watch. The watch goes a step above average divers by offering both day and date display on the dial at the 3 o'clock position. The watch features a screw down crown at 4 o'clock, assisting the 200 meter water resistance rating. As we've mentioned previously, powering the SKX is the Seiko 7S26 automatic movement. This movement was introduced alongside the SKX back in 96 and has gone on to become a standard option for affordable Seiko watches across many different models. Its robust construction, 41 hours of power reserve and ease of servicing has resulted in it becoming a fan favourite. The SKX wears very comfortably on my 7 inch wrist. For a wrist which is used to a case width of about 40mm maximum, I do enjoy strapping this 42mm diver to the wrist every now and then. One key feature of how a watch wears on the wrist is actually the lug to lug length of the case. Commonly we all look at the case width to determine how a watch would wear, however lug to lug is equally as valuable information. Case in point, the SKX. When wearing this watch, I used the watch for all manner of activities with no issues at all, and the SKX took them all in its stride. The watch's wearable proportions and highly legible dial make it perfect for more active work. The thickness of the piece doesn't feel that bulky at all. Its 13.5mm thickness is broken up by an 8mm thick case with a 5.5mm thick bezel, resulting in a bezel you don't really notice that much on the wrist when looking from the side of the watch. Many people are part of the watch community, will occasionally say they think Seiko, and specifically the SKX, are present day pre-luxury versions of Rolex and the Submariner. If we just look at the two watches and what they offer the owner, then similarities are strong. Both have rotating dive bezels, inform the reader of the time and date at a glance, they both use stainless steel cases, and of course, they're both reliable as ever. Realistically, most if not all of divers nowadays will be wearing a diving computer on their wrist, rather than a mechanical watch. The ones who do still favour mechanical, I can only imagine they won't be reaching for a £6,500 watch to take with them. And this is the same not just for diving. The majority of wrists spotted doing work that requires a beta watch to be worn will have a watch from the likes of Seiko strapped to them. 60 years ago, this was Rolex, so I do understand the comparisons. One key point that can be credited to the SKX as a positive is the continual rise in popularity of sports watches and the evolutionary advancements towards their increasing versatility. This is something I have mentioned over on the Watch Gecko blog before, so it's hard to imagine the SKX would be so popular if it wasn't for the market's opinion on how versatile diving watches have become. The SKX we have here today comes on a diving rubber strap in a dark black colour. This suits the watch's style naturally very well due to its high resistance to water. 
Rubber straps are also one of the best options for active wear, alongside nylon straps such as NATO's. With a lug width of 22mm, robust strap options for the SKX are available in abundance. The Desert Sand Swiss Style NATO. Once again, another strap which works to emphasise the use of colour on the SKX. The Swiss Style NATO also has a slightly different design to our standard strap. Specifically, the first stainless steel keeper is movable to help you secure the strap exactly as you want it. The hardware on the strap also receives an upgrade with a more chunky, unique aesthetic. Coming in at 330mm in length, there's plenty of options for a range of wrist sizes, as well as plenty of space to tuck the excess strap back into the keepers. The Zulu Diver 284 rubber strap. On the surface, this is a very similar strap to the standard Seiko one, however it favours a highly durable Italian rubber material which boasts many great properties. Fresh water, salt water and UV, all things this watch strap is resistant to, making it ideal for all manner of activities. I found the blue version of the strap received the most wrist time, picking up on the blue found on the Seiko's bezel. Finally, we have something a little different. The Galax Mesh Bracelet combines the stylishness of mesh straps with the practicality of chunky solid deployment buckles in this unique hybrid. This bracelet comes with one removable link, as well as a range of micro adjustments on the buckle. For all of the SKX's positive points, there are also a couple of things I'm not as keen on. These actually resulted in me still going for an SKX as my personal bead to watch, just a slightly different version. For me, I found the crown at the 4 o'clock position more of an annoyance than a positive for the SKX. The crown guards on the SKX also don't help the time changing process. Even though the relatively short lug to lug distance helps the watch wear smaller than the advertised 42mm, I still would prefer a slightly smaller watch. This is purely based on personal taste. However, for a 42mm watch, the SKX does wear impressively well. For me, I personally went for the SKX031. This is a sub 40mm watch, coming in at around 12mm thick. It has the crown at the 3 o'clock position rather than 4, and has improved the framing around the day and date window. This watch normally comes with a black bezel, however I've changed that out for a faded one. Unfortunately, this watch has been discontinued, making it a little trickier to get your hands on one. So, why is the SKX the go-to beta? Well, to start with, the watch is built to an impressive level of quality for the price you pay. You get yourself a robust, reliable diver with a respected movement in a wearable size, all for an appealing price. The watch has a timeless, classic design, not trying to be anything it isn't, just doing all is required affordably. Due to the popularity of the watch, servicing and parts are readily available, and once again, affordable. And failing all of that, you could always just pick up a new one for less than £300. If you're interested in learning more about the watch, we will leave a link in the description below. Stay tuned to the channel for the next episode of 10 for 10, where we explore another great watch that's perfect in creating a well-rounded collection.